Hi guys, today I'm going to build this Nidgepole toolbox. I'm Lynn and this is the Darwin Orbit channel. So this box is made out of maple. It has walnut splines and a walnut tool tray. So let's get building. So here's the idea for this project. A simple box with an inset top and bottom. Mitered corners and splines. To create a lid, the box is cut in two. So let's open it up. Inside the box, we have a nice fitting tray that sits in the middle. And there you go. I started with running a maple board through the planer to get it nice and smooth. Then I resaw the wood and cut the piece to size. So uh, looking the wood over and thinking about what size I want for the box. So uh, these are the pieces I need for the main box. And these are the pieces for the lid. Next, I'm writing the long and the short sides through the router with a quarter inch bit so I can insert the top and the bottom. So the bottom will sit flush, whereas the top will be inset a little bit. Now for the lid, I've got a couple of thin pieces of maple I'm cutting up here, and I'm just going to laminate them together to create one piece. And uh, adding a little clamping power from all sides so it sets up right. Okay, so time to assemble this box. I'm putting down some glue in the router grooves and then I'm simply putting all the pieces together. So uh, that looks good. Then holding the box in place with some clamps as the glue dries. Next, to add some strength to the box, I'm going with splines. So the first step is adding the holes and I'm using a spline jig for the router here with a quarter inch bit. And I decided to add two splines on each side. Uh, one will be inside the lid and one will be in the main body. Now for the splines I went with walnut. I love the contrast there. So cutting them up to size and then gluing them in. A little light tapping, sanding at times if they're touched too thick and uh, repeat. To make my life a little easier, I opted for cutting off the excess wood on the bandsaw and then sanding the sides down flush. Once the splines were cut and sanded, I cut the box in half on the table saw. I was uh, really careful here and cut one side at a time. And uh, there you have it, a top and a bottom. I love this technique. Now, let's move on to the tray. These are the pieces I need, a bottom and then the sides. Cutting a groove with the router so the bottom can sit flush. To connect this box, I decided to use my box joint jig. So uh, these are really small joints, simply the width of the blade, which is eighth of an inch. And uh, there you can hear the rain out a shop. <laughs> so time to glue the tray together and I'm simply adding some glue to the joints here and the grooves and uh, then making a little box. Clamping everything in place and uh, wait to dry. Okay so time to put everything together. In order for the tray to be able to sit inside the box I've got some thin maple here that I'm cutting to size. Seeing how this would work. Looks good. And uh, then let's make sure the lid will fit too. Okay. So then just gluing in the sides and uh, adding some clamps and letting it set up. Then sanding the tray and the box and removing any dried glue. Now, I love the look of the maple and the walnut, however, I really wanted this box to feel a little vintage with a bit more character. 
which is why I decided to add some light cherry dye to the box, simply to get it a touch darker. Then uh, to seal the wood I'm adding a coat of de-wax shellac everywhere. Now shellac is one of my favorite finishes in general, however the main reason why I'm adding it here is because the next step is flocking. And when you add flocking you need to seal the wood first so the glue doesn't get absorbed into the wood. So uh, taping off the sides here and then I'm going outside because this stuff is not water based and has a strong smell. So flocking is made up of two parts, the glue and the fibers, both of which should be the same color. This is the color wine. So you brush on the glue and I used a disposable china bristle brush. Then I placed the box in a plastic bag inside a cardboard box and shut the fibers out with this flocking canister. And uh, here it's a good idea to overdo it since you can capture any extras later on in the bag. Then I left that to dry for a couple of days before shaking off the excess and removing the tape. So uh, let's try it with the tray. Okay, that looks good. Now uh, let's move on to the hardware. So I've got a couple of nice hinges. So I'm measuring out where they should go and how deep they should sit. And then carefully chiseling the wood out of the box and the tray. And uh, when you're dealing with small parts to chisel out like this, it's a good idea to just take your time and not rush it. And uh, cleaning it up a little here with a shoulder plane and making sure the hinge fits. Then I'm using a self-centering bit to drill the holes and then screwing in the hinges. Once that was in place, I measured out the space for the clasp. Just finding the center, drilling some holes and screwing the clasp in. Now to finish the box, this time I'm going with a wipe on gel polyurethane. This is pretty thick stuff and goes on really nicely. I'm just putting it on with a cloth here and totally I'm putting two coats on. Also coating the tray and this should add some nice protection. For this box I have this gorgeous leather handle. I actually removed one layer of the leather because I thought it was a little too thick for this small box. Here you can also see the metal attachments that you're supposed to attach the leather to the wood with, like for a trunk. But I thought the metal was a little too large for this box, so time to think of some other solution. Instead I drilled some holes in the leather and got some beautiful brass screws. I also drilled some holes in the box. But uh, before putting it together, I decided to add some wax polish to the box and the leather here. And this is simply to add some protection, plus it darkens the leather just a touch. Then I attached the leather to the box with the screws and uh, securing with a nut on the other side. And uh, I must say, I really like the brass popping up there against the maroon flocking. It looks quite nice. Then uh, putting in the tray, closing the box, and uh, it's done! So originally I designed this box for art supplies, but then as I started you know, working on it and thinking about it some more, I thought this would just be perfect for storing smaller hand tools, my favorite hand tools. Uh, no matter whether I need to bring them out to the outdoor shop or if I go out for demonstrations or anything like that. Like the perfect kind of travel kit for your tools, no matter what your tools are, maybe art supplies. Um, but you can really fit quite a few things in here and I love that you know you have your most favorite, most used things in a nice case like this. I think one of the things that I like the most about this, this thing here, I mean it's really the tray. The fact that you don't just stuff this one box full of things and it gets you know really messy. With a tray there's a bit of a separation so everything is a little bit neater. Um, I also really like the flocking. This is the first time I've ever done flocking and I think it creates such a nice finish. Uh, really, really nice. 
So another thing I really like about this box is the way the handle came out. Um, I think it looks really nice and that's an excellent example of kind of working around uh, the design. Like first I was going to have these bigger handles but then I didn't quite like that so then I you know I attached it in a different way and sometimes you just have to kind of think around your initial uh, uh, thought and that came out really nice. Uh, so yeah I'm really looking forward to kind of bringing this out, traveling with it and kind of just having my nicest things in it. Don't forget to subscribe if this is your first time here so you don't miss any of my upcoming projects. Uh, also, I'll put links to all the products that I used in the description, so go and check that out. Uh, otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye!